Well, welcome back. And I'll start here, Prof, by telling you, you'd say it would be unfair to say the Niger, the Niger Delta is not so safe, safe. Ah. For, the oil, for the oil companies. That's not an excuse. That's an enemy so of Niger Delta, anybody who says so. Okay, so they're used to being on that side. They've been there. They've been making money there for 60 years. How can they say that place is unsafe? Okay. How did they make the money from? I've told you that money built Lagos, it built Abuja, it built Bauchi, it built Jos, it built uh, Kaduna, it built Sokoto. Is that it... bad? Oh. It is unjust, she may say it's not bad, mm -hmm. that you divert, you channel the wealth of one section on that, on that develop that place, impoverish that place, and transfer through your illegal or your unjust laws and transfer that wealth systematically. Okay. So that every month, 36 states in Nigeria, only 10 of those states contribute to the Nigerian Treasury, only 10. Lagos is one of them. The other 26 are economic pariahs. They are ever parasites. They don't contribute. But once a month, they all gather in Abuja and share money. That is a worse robbery than what one, the agitation you're talking about. But then it's a federation. A federation is not a club for robbery. A federation means the constituent parts of that federation have autonomy over their resources. Then they agree, like an old student association, mm -hmm. to make a percentage contribution to run a central government. That's what the federation means. Mm -hmm. The one we're running now is a unitary government, it's an empire, it's a source of provocation, and we are determined to end that exploitation. So you must be one of those who support some kind of restructuring for the country. Restructuring, I'm a major advocate of it. There's no escape. It really means return Nigeria to 1960. We well, have not even moved beyond 1960. It will surprise you. 1960 said, regions, keep your wealth. We'll bring this amount to run government. We 1963, have uh -huh. the same thing. Mm -hmm. It is the soldiers who demolished that system. And since they demolished it, Nigeria has not enjoyed peace. But if that's going to happen, how is it going to happen when even the politicians haven't been able to sit down? It's and... a simple thing. We held a national conference in 2014. I was a delegate. Mm -hmm. And we worked out all the approaches in a pacific, peaceful way. You don't even need any... any so any... what's holding it back? Those who what are going to you... lose. Those who are going to lose are there any from lo that justice. Are there any losers in this? The losers are that if, for example, if you are from Kano, and Kano has 44 local governments, Every month, Kano carry 44 lorry loads of money from Abuja. Bayesa State that owns Oloibiri, where the oil started, they have only eight local governments. That, 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 that is so obvious that unless you restructure, there will be no end to agitation. No, but one remembers that even before, there were other forms of economic act activity. You know, there was palm oil, there was groundnuts, there was all of those things. They have abandoned groundnuts, they have abandoned agriculture. Because even if you don't work, at the end of the month, money comes to you. <laughs> you pay your workers. You can go to Hajj. That is going to end. That is the work that the Pandef is doing now. And, and, this I has, and this has nothing to do with ethnicity or because, Forget people, about like, ethnicity. for example, are like, are you saying people hate to hear the fact that, okay, the Hausas are lazy people, no, 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 no. are thieves. It's not even Hausa, it's a really cabal. Forget about Hausa. They're everywhere. I don't know Hausa people in the motion here. It's not Hausa. It's what we are saying is. that what the Nigerian nationalists negotiated at the time of independence with the British mm -hmm. was that we are going to have a federal government like India, like United States of America, like Canada, like Switzerland, like Ethiopia, like Australia. In those countries I've mentioned, there are 28 of them in the world, and they control 40% of the world population. Federation means each region or state or province, whatever name you go to it, has 100% control. So if your area is water, water logged, like Delta State is 48% other water, it's not only oil and gas we have. That water is an asset. It's a resource. We convert it to wealth. We can use it to generate electricity. The corridor of the ocean, 200, 200 kilometers of the ocean below the Delta State, we can locate 20 shipping yards there. Any ship coming from Europe going to Asia, we bet there. We will make money from there. Oil and gas are perishable. They are even polluters. The people who make progress in the world are not living on oil and gas. 
Are you leaders of the Niger Delta not also culpable? Because if you even, you know, scale down and come to Delta, you'll find these Sokos and the Jaws and the Robos and the Undokwas all struggling for, okay, I'm marginalized, I'm not marginalized. So... No, it's natural. It's natural when, when, you, when you throw some seedlings of corn to a brood of uh, chicken, they will fight. So let's restore... 100% ownership of resource to ourselves. First. We'll go and fight there. Mm -hmm. But at that time, each region or state will be struggling to put its best into the market. Mm -hmm. Lagos may not have oil. They have now. They may have other things. Ekiti State may have intellectual resources to export professors to states that need them. And the money they will earn will come back to Ekiti State. That is how the Koreans and the Japanese built their country. They were working in America and sending money home. That is how a federation of praise, you will change your points of strength. Okay, let me talk about this agitation now. You have the Masob agitation on one side. You have Boko Haram on one side. You have the ND on one side. In fact, recent times, I started seeing Katu Roslas or Fulani Headsmen. I don't know what those ones are agitating. So the agitation all over the place. There are many agitations. There are many protests in Nigeria assuming violent form. Yes. And the reason why that violent form has become dominant is because the federal government of Nigeria has accumulated too many powers. It cannot exercise them. A federal government does not accumulate such powers. It devolves power to the constituent units. So in the National Conference in 2004, we 2014, met... 2014, you mean? 2014. Mm -hmm. We said, police, devolve police. There will be no one inspector general of police. In 1960, each region had its own Inspector General of Police. How will this help the case, for example, in your state, in Africa recently, when somebody's head was cut off oh, the, by the cattle? Um, if if the, the Delta floor. state has its own police formation, which is going to have in the next few years, and... and All the, things being equal. We don't need equality. We will fight it. If the House of Assembly appoints the police commissioner or the police IG, Africa, a university town where I've been for 15 years, we have its own police formation too. They are called constabularies. When you enter London in the UK, there are six police formations in London. There's metropolitan, there's everywhere you go. You cannot escape if you have a crime, if you make a crime there. Because the thing has been devolved across. Because security is the primary duty of government. The Nigerian government, having accumulated all the powers under military regime, can no longer exercise those powers now. So it has allowed people who are angry to express that anger and the government is incapable. They have, back, they have 400 I, I police in Nigeria. I go back to the example Nigeria. I gave to you. So if, yeah. for example, that somebody's head was cut off... It will be, it will be solved by the Abraka police. You won't wait for the IG to... You don't even need him. As it is now, the police commissioner in Delta State is from uh, Casina State. He doesn't know the state. He will, because of fear, he can't even enter the water area. That is not government. That is imperialism. And we are determined to terminate local imperialism. Let each area of Nigeria grow on its own strength. Let it develop according to the pace that it can fund. Mm -hmm. Let no area of Nigeria leak, like, live like uh, 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 an amoeba on another part of the country and become so lazy and confident that they have some slaves in Niger Delta whose money they can. We are determined to end that colonialism. It has started. Pandev, a, Pandev is leading I was it now. Saying, Pandev is having conversations. I mean, I think the, the vice president was in Delta and met, you know, with Pandev as well. All the negotiations... That's I know a good response to our agitation. When the agitations got to the federal government mm -hmm. on November 1, the, the, the president asked the vice president, go and see these people. What is happening? And he came. He has done very well. What Nigeria government could not do in 60 years, Professor... Oshiba Ajo did it in 16 days. No, he, was it different? he taught six oil producing states and he spoke with candor as a professor of jurisprudence and justice, not just as a government official. He saw the anarchy on the ground, he saw the other development, and he said, How could this be happening in the country? Where is? So, so we are on the right path with him. Let me remind you, though, that for example, the people say leadership, leadership is also culpable. Ibori, for example, ex-governor, right? Former governor of Delta State. Yes, people yes. says he's a crook, he's a thief, and you guys are hailing him. Yeah, if, if the population that he ruled over are uh, saluting him, he could have bribed five million people. The people who are calling him those negative epithets 
are the people whose achievement challenged their authority. If we're going to that matter, we won't live here. Those, <laughs> those are the forces of hegemonic control in Nigeria, which make sure that if somebody of substance is a measure in that colonized part of Nigeria, they go for you. They Where went for Adakaboro, they went for uh, Kesara Wewa, <laughs> they went for Alamesia, he's dead now. They went for Ebori, they went for Lucky Gnedion. Anybody who is standing up there, no, 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 a, Prof, that, would be, that would be for another day because the question is that the fact you're helping your people doesn't mean you won't steal their money. I don't, I don't buy I that. Don't know how, I don't know about how much money. I served there going for four years. Mm -hmm. I was a professor there. Mm -hmm. I never took a contract. I carried all the files of the contractors as chief of staff. Mm -hmm. I never took one. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about corruption, these are stories that you can manufacture in EFTs. I don't want to go into that. If you want to wind up now, you're saying justice and equity can only come from a true federation. Yeah, there must be a restructured. Luckily for us now, that clarion call now has a geographical spread. We, the Niger Delta, are in the forefront of it because we know it will resource to what was then 1966. 60. The Southwest states, the six states in the Southwest, using Afeni Ferry, are also involved. We meet regularly. Southeast, the most devastated part of Nigeria, they are in support of it. Mm -hmm. Those three zones are on one side. We met in Abuja last week, the Middle Belt. That's the first theater of slavery for the Nota oligarchy. They are also involved. In a few years, restructuring becomes inevitable. Because without it, there's no even moving forward. It is the lack of it that is making the government to face so many problems it cannot solve. They are exhausted. Because that was not the way that Nigeria was structured for governance. So Thank restructuring you, is inevitable. And it must happen. It cannot be repressed. And it will come to happen soon enough for Nigeria to regain the strength for self-development as we did 50 years ago marching with India, marching with South Korea, marching with uh, 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 all the countries of Asia that were dependent with us. They are 55 years ahead of us now. There's a lot of catching up to do. Thank you, Prof, for being my guest. Thank you for flying yourself all the way from Abraka to get here. You had a one flight to catch all the way in Benin. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. On your terms. I leave you here with pictures from Onya, which is right at the bifurcation of the Niger Delta, where I come from, to give you an idea of the kind of degradation that goes on in these spots. Agitation does work, yes. Well, there is a contract awarded and everybody's hoping, including my father, Chief B. Yonyanukwe, that something will be done very soon. Now, the worry now is that just about a month or two ago, there was a publication of so many projects awarded and, yes, awarded by NDDC. They looked through and saw that this Anya project is not there. So they got worried, meaning that they have been sidetracked again.